a little maxi it's the maxi in there no 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 check that out that's what she said ah, ooh, it's sharp Okay. What is happening folks welcome to another video um, I'm out here going to cook and um, I got a diesel powered heater um, I'm gonna test it out for the tent um, I have the cooking items in here and I'm not gonna disclose what I'm cooking yet but this is the diesel heater fresh out the box never used yet I want to try to read the black parts real quick and uh, get that going but I got the diesel gas there Everything else, the tent, uh, the cot, because it's going to take about a couple hours for the food to cook. So I'm going to hopefully be toasty with that. So uh, be back shortly and uh, have all this set up for you. If I did not say, and I don't think I did, it is uh, 34 degrees outside, 730. So by the time I get started, it's going to be about 830, maybe 34 and a half. I'm going to show you my findings right now. Um, I hooked a little uh, muffler dill up with the uh, clamps included. I do appreciate that they have a one for a car. You can hook it up to a DC or an AC. Uh, I'm, I was going to be hooking up to a, a little uh, EBL power bank. I was going to do that out here. Uh, I already have it filled with gas. Um, I like that, the, that they do have a compartment uh, to put your remote and some other stuff in. It does come with a battery. I thought it didn't come with a battery, but it did. 
Um, the unit right here that takes electricity uh, is uh, the power unit the remote needs to, to take care of it. But uh, this is H Calorie, the company. Um, I did put a gallon and a half of diesel in here, which there it is there. Um, I did notice uh, the fan is right here. And this is this is open. I'm not sure if you put your fingers or something in there. That's what she said. But this right here, I think it needs to have and don't pull out. What she said um, it needs to have some kind of hose because you know if um, if you don't have a hose, you have to put that one and a half gallon diesel uh, fuel inside of your your unit that you're trying to do and I'm not going to do that so today um, I'm going to have to get with the company and have them send me a hose for this because I'm not going to use this like it is because that's very dangerous um, so let me get with H calorie and that video will be in the future but right now let's get to cooking all right everyone I'm all set up I just need to go find my wood um, you're gonna see a dog in the picture for a little bit hopefully the dog is not going to eat uh, the food uh, this is Max Max didn't want to be put up in the pen uh, so I would have a dogless video but uh, hopefully he doesn't snatch the stew meat over there I'm gonna try to watch him carefully uh, but this uh, hey hey Max Max go on yeah this this video wrong hand but at least you tried okay going over there get 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 he'll be back in two seconds um but i'll have to uh go through the ingredients uh the ingredients are probably a little bit uh more to your liking and more on a not budgeted because i'm, I'm a cheapskate uh, but this was brought to you by d and brian chesterfield uh i want to uh appreciate them for donating to the chef fund if you don't know about the chef fund it is in the descriptions what that is is just to get fancier food um, that i do on my stealths and on my cooking um, of the videos um, but what what i have down here is uh starting off with the seasoning um, i got a little pill bottle deal that i got seasonings on each side so that makes it handy uh, to carry around so you don't have to carry around a whole luggage uh, full of spices uh, we have the long grain wild rice. Yes, they, the party, party rice. 
Um, we have some honey gold. These are like triple the price of regular potatoes. These are honey gold potatoes. And I got them smaller so I can just cut them up and not even have to worry about skinning them or anything. Um, we have beef broth. Um, I'll, I'll get into that later, but that is four cups. Um, it asked for three and a half, but I'm going to use four. Um, and I'll talk about that later. Uh, there's uh, sliced mushrooms, not any sliced. Um, you can get the regular that's not sliced. That is 10 cents more if they slice it for you. That's 10 cents extra, folks. I wouldn't have done that. Uh, but And I wouldn't have got Baby Bellas probably. I would have just got regular button, white button um, mushrooms. But again, D and Brian Chesterfield. Uh, so thank you. Um, we have the bay leaves they asked for two bay leaves so i'm going to put two bay leaves in there um we have the uh not traditional for a stew uh but i have the sweet peppers uh they're not too very sweet uh, but they're uh they're just different than celery I, i'm not a really big fan of celery in my stew but if you do uh please let me know in the comments what what do you like to add to stew and if it's something that normal people don't do that's, that's your take on it please uh, comment below <coughs> excuse me i did buy the expensive stew meat i'm not sure why this stew meat is so expensive uh, but uh, we have that and uh, that is the the main attraction of this dish uh, followed by crispy onions yes i'm going to garnish it with fris uh uh, crispy not frisky but frisky frisky crispy onions i guess frisky and the long grain party rice is going to have a merry good time um we have an onion we have boston lettuce i'm not sure people from boston is probably not going to say uh well probably going to say that's not our lettuce it just says boston lettuce and i'm not sure why it's boston lettuce let me know as well um, but i'm going to let you know what i'm going to do with that later uh, followed by we got olive oil we have it virgin it's virgin extra it's extra virgin i'm not sure why it's extra but it's extra virgin uh, we got red wine vinegar we got beef stew um, seasoning as well as onion mix soup um, and peeled garlic and last but not least flour not coke that is because if i get pulled over that just lets them know that's not coke but if you're a coke donkey mule if you're a mule and you write that on your package they might they might just think it's flour then and uh, i have my sharp handy dandy knife that i gotta try to juggle ah, it's sharp it's sharp folks i'll show you how sharp it is i'm not sure if you see that cut right there yep right there um i'm gonna try one more time one more time because i got band-aids and duct tape and super glue in my my box oh one more one more one more one more okay forget it forget it okay i'll be back Try to chop, try to chop everything up right now. Uh, I did start the fire, so I wouldn't have any wood left over when I get uh, to cooking. Um, so we're going to uh, chop everything up, except these, because these are already chopped. Find my onion. Okay. Okay. Let me chop these up last. Okay. These are already chopped, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that with the meat over here. But what you want to do first, you're going to sear the meat first. You want to sear the meat, that's the only time you're going to get the caramelization on there because once the moisture gets on it, it's not going to be able to caramelize. I'm going to chop this. I'm just going to roughly chop it. I'm not going to chop it into 
a lot of a lot of different pieces. There we go. You don't want that in there. You don't want this in there. And just to get to chopping. Okay, and I got some extra plates here just so that I can make them look a little pretty for you. If it was for me, I would just put it all in the same pot and throw it all in at the same time, but we're doing it like this for you guys. You're welcome. Okay, a little nature pepper won't hurt nobody. Let me pick these back up off the floor. Nope, that's good. It's fiber. Okay. What do we have next? Potatoes. And it calls for a couple big potatoes, which is about a pound a piece, and these is a pound and a half. So we're just gonna chop all these up. So I'll show you how I'm dicing it. Uh, let's go kind of like that. And about about this size here. About that size, maybe uh, a third. Like that. So we're going to do it all like that and uh, take it from there. I want these evenly cut uh, because uh, they will not cook evenly. Duh. Okay, I'm just cutting the ends off. I'm not going to worry about all this little stuff here. Uh, again, I have plenty of them. I already took the liberty of cutting the others up right here. So I'm just uh, chopping these, like I said, rough chop. And this is my celery instead of, uh, you know, instead of celery, this is what I'm using. Makes it a little bit more colorful as well. You want me to use for this? Let me uh, let me show you. I bought this. I bought this very sharp contraption here. Very sharp. I'll tell you why because I cut myself but works very well it has a whipper for if you want to make miracle whip right there but all you do is put this stuff in there put the top on it close the lid and like a lawnmower There you go. Okay. 
Okay, I got the two bay leaves here. Uh, there's no chopping, no chopping to do with the bay leaves. Just take a couple out, uh, drop it in there. I put that in with the garlic, and I put the garlic in this little Chinese-looking bowl. Save the rest. And I'm gonna go lastly with the carrots. They say three, about three to five large, maybe five large carrots. So I'm just gonna chop. I'm gonna show you how I chop it up, chop the rest of it, and then we'll get to, to going ahead with the pot. So um, I'm just gonna chop these uh, maybe in thirds. It depends how big they are, so she said. Uh, I'm gonna do thirds on these, and some of them I'll do just, uh, just half for the smaller ones. But. I'll be back with you once I get all these chopped up. We'll get the, the um, pan hot and sear the meat and get to going. Okay, I think I got everything about done. We got the carrots. We have the sweet peppers, we have the stew meat, we have the onions, honey potatoes, garlic with two bay leaves, and the portobello baby bella mushrooms. Not porta, I guess bella. All right, whatever. Okay, the pan might be nice and hot now, so we're going to... Uh, Slap some meat in it. So she said, get my wooden spoon to get the lid off. Well, well at least the lid's not hot. Okay. Calls for about, I don't know, maybe a couple tablespoons of oil try one piece of meat but I don't think it's hot enough yet well almost there it's sizzling got a little char on it already all you want to do is sear this um, and then start um, adding the rest of the stuff. A little maxi, it's the maxi in there. No, no, no. Check that out. That's what she said. Okay, the next step, I'm going to add just some of the onions. I'm going to leave the rest for the very end. I want a, I want a little different bite at the end. Uh, I don't want all the same textures. So I like to do all my vegetables like that. So at the end, you get a little bit of different flavors from the same vegetable as well. I'm going to let that uh, saute down a little bit. And then I'm going to put it in the beef broth and the rest of the items. delicious folks I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, salt coming you always want coming on your meat um, maybe some spicy Montreal chili powder onion powder uh, and pepper herb A 
for Herb. We got uh, chili powder, onion powder, cumin, lots of cumin, salt. And some spicy raw Montreal. I was gonna put some beef stew uh, mix in there. I read the back to see what's all in here. It says cornstarch, salt, onion, sugar, spices. So this is pretty much everything that I put in there. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even use this. Stir that up a little bit and then add the beef broth. I'm gonna show you this real quick. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna put this whole thing in there. This is four cups. It asks for three and a half cups usually, but people put red wine in there. Yes, they put alcohol in there. And I'm going to tell you a little story about that in a second. Once this uh, gets to heating up a little bit more, I'll put the other stuff in. But we'll close it and have a little story time real quick. Okay, while that beef broth thickens up... Um, I always look back to, I watch Emerald Live and a lot of other cookers, but Emerald Live, when I used to watch that Emerald show on Food Network, every time somebody, when he said putting red wine or putting wine in there or anything, uh, they got hysterical. Like somebody hit the grand slam in the ninth inning with two outs and two strikes, and they was down by, by four, you know, um, well, three. You know what the fuck, you know what I'm talking about. I've <clears throat> just messed the whole story up. But they go wild. They go crazy. Just like that. Uh, but people talk about alcoholics. Um, they usually don't go crazy like that at the liquor store. They just get what they want and, they, they, and, and they're good. They don't clap. They don't get up there and clap at the counter and they don't do that. So, no, I'm not clapping at you, Max. Come on, Max. Come on. Well, um, they don't do that, okay? So it's uh, it's weird to me. I'm an alcoholic that, that stopped drinking two decades ago, okay? Um, I used to drink two fists a day. But every time that they clap when alcohol got in there, this... They, no, no, you tried, you tried it. You tried to ease on in there, didn't you? Uh, but every time that wine or whatever, alcohol, tequila, vodka, whatever they put inside the food, they get to clapping like, I got uneasy about it. I always get uneasy about it, and I chuckle in deep, deep inside. You say it, folks. Uh. But I had to bring that up about the red wine that's supposed to go in here. But if you do want to cook with it, it's supposed to cook all the alcohol off, which it, it, it does. You might get the taste. So if you're getting saliva in the mouth by just talking about it like I am now, don't put it in your food. Because you might have that craving like, ooh, that tastes pretty good. But uh, just something I had to say. Let me uh, Let me check this. Okay, it's it's bubbling. It's bubbling. Let's put some stuff in here. And Max, go on. Max, go. Go, 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 go. I'm gonna probably cook this for about two, two and a half hours. I'm gonna wait one hour. 
to put this in. I do not like mashed potatoes in my stew. So I'm going to wait an hour. I like a little bite. So I'm going to wait on that. Put the two bay leaves in there. Get the garlic. Get the mushrooms. Carrots. And I'm waiting on... You know what? I can't wait. There we go. Okay, let's stir this up. Put the pot on. Let it sit for an hour and I'll be back. And I'm going to use a thickener, the flour, at last just to thicken it up if I need to thicken it up. I usually go with cornstarch, but you know I use cornstarch for my, my nether regions. Um, so I don't want to waste my cornstarch on that. I use flour. But I would prefer to use cornstarch. I really would. Starting hurry the fuck up for 59 minutes. Whoops. We need at least red wine vinegar, folks. Let's open it up. Yeah, I'm not even sure why they even call for red wine vinegar. I guess just to, the bite of it. Let me let me taste it. Woo! -wee. Okay. Should be good. Guys, I'm going to admit it was my fault. I was so happy about the coming, I forgot to put the onion soup in there. So let's uh, let's add that. It's only been 10 minutes. It's only been 10 minutes. That's what she said. There we go. Let's go. I'm not gonna do a whole hour and a half. I'll probably do another hour. But let's uh get these puppies in there. Taste it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cannot wait. Go ahead and say it folks. Starting hurry the fuck up for 59 minutes. Hurry the fuck up. 15 seconds remaining. Hurry the fuck up. 10 seconds remaining. 5, 3, 2, 1. Hurry the fuck up. Over. Okay, it's time for me to take this off the fire. I'm 
I'm going to let it thicken up by itself and see if it's going to be thick enough. If not, I'll uh, do some little magic here. Put the lid on it. Hang this again because uh, we need to cook some wild rice. So, I'm going to do it like so. Move this over. Okay, while that water is heating up, um, they say to add equal parts flour or cornstarch uh, to water. Um, I'm not a fan of using water to dilute the goodness. So what I'm gonna do is use the stew mixture and uh, I'm gonna use this whipper. So let's, uh, let's try that out. That water's gonna heat up. I'm gonna put this bag in there uh, and uh, 90 seconds to a minute and 20 seconds which is two minutes, and uh, we'll be done. Get this right like so. Get some mixture in here. I'm probably gonna put about Three tablespoons in there, maybe four. Let's do let's do four tablespoons. And I'm just going to guess on the tablespoons. Uh, one, two, three, four. So what I'm gonna do, lock this up again. And let's do this in your face. That's what I said. Okay. There's the mixture right there. I'll put that in there. Let me bring you over here for, with me. Put a little bit in there, like so. I'm gonna put this right back on the fire because you want it to boil first. You wanna bring it to a boil. Bring it to a bowl and then get it back off the heat. Just leave it there like so, about two minutes. Getting the stew off the fire. I put it right on the fire and it actually thickened up really nicely. I'm going to put it right here and show you. Yeah, look at that. There's still some in there. If it, if it just takes the lid off and let it uh, cool down a little bit, it'll thicken up even more. But it's hot, so it's going to be a little bit more flu, fluidic, if that is a word. But let's, uh, let's plate this up. Okay, and you're still wondering what I am doing with the Boston lettuce. And people from Boston, please let me know if this is actual Boston lettuce.
I just thought of this in the store. I'm like, you know what? Let's uh, let's just make it like a blossom onion type thing, but a blossom lettuce. That could be our bowl. Yeah, yeah. You see where I'm going with this? So I got the rice. I'm gonna put the rice right down in there. Okay. I'm going to save a little bit for my uncle. Uh, uncle Johnny, I'm at my Aunt Tammy's and Uncle Johnny's. Um, and uh, he goes as Kiwani Johnny, because he's in Kiwani. And uh, we're going to sit there and relax. He just got off the, out the hospital. He probably wouldn't mind being on camera, but he just got out the hospital. So I'm going to respect uh, him just trying to heal up and uh, wish him a, a, a fast, full recovery, please. Uh, get some of this on here. One, one more scoop. One more scoop. Okay. Hey, wait, wait. There's more. And today only, we're doubling the offer. Gotta get some crispy onions, some frisky crispy onions. Let's just garnish a little bit. Let's not let's not hide. Let's not hide the the goodness there. Okay. Okay. Let's let's dig in, folks. You know what I'm gonna say. The best stew ever. That was really good. I do have to add, all the stuff that I did add, the cumin and everything, it needed more, always need more cumin. Always on the cumin, on the back side, front side, wherever. Um, but getting a facial with this steam. But the, um, the, the beef stew mixture, I actually poured that whole pack in here off camera. I was trying to be sneaky about it. I would have been sneaky, but I had to tell you, because I don't lie on Thursday, so today is Thursday. But this is really good, folks. Exactly how I made it. Exactly. Do exactly what I did. Exact ingredients. That's the only way to make stew, folks. Really good. Well, I'm going to eat the rest of this, but I want to thank D and Brian Chesterfield. Okay? Appreciate it. If it wasn't for them, this meal wouldn't have been as good as it is because I bought some high-class, top-notch ingredients instead of the basic uh, great value stuff. So, uh, D and Brian Chesterfield, thank you very much. I'm gonna go in and eat the rest of this with my uncle. So I got my bowl and I'll get his uh, prepared. He won't have the lettuce, that's kind of for looks. I will eat some of this lettuce. I'll probably eat the rest of it, maybe a salad or something later on, but it's mostly for looks. Let me let me get a picture for this thumbnail because I, I just started eating it. Still looks good though. Well, thanks for watching another video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, what's wrong with you? Um, hit that subscribe button, a notification button. Um, if you haven't shared this yet, please share the video of people like to camp, that people like to uh, just cook, um, or cook at a camp, or camp at a cook. And like the video. Please like the video. If you don't like the video, screw you. But if you can hit the like button to help the channel out, it will help spread the channel, get the algorithm going like like a little chihuahua. Well, then I get all excited. I'm like, Jojo, the idiot circus. And get it out to more people so the channel can grow and I can do more stuff like this. Um, and maybe even go to Canada, folks. I'm, I'm going to go to Canada in July or August. Let's try to do that. So please share the video to get me to Canada and uh, take it from there. So talk to you later. and. I gotta eat. Well, I gotta take thumbnail. Gotta go. Hey, thanks for watching the video again. If you haven't 
visited my website yet, um, the, the address is www.garbagedisposalstore.com. You can navigate through the top, all these links right here. Um, there is actually a question and comment form. If you have any questions or comments, uh, fill that out and it'll go straight to my email. At the very bottom, there is a free newsletter. Just sign up for right here um, and you'll get a weekly newsletter. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting on? Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit see all so you get all the notifications and don't miss the videos. Please comment. I like to um, listen to your comments uh, and respond to you. So I do like to interact with you guys. Uh, please share the video with your friends, family, even your boss. and. Have a great day. Let's meet other plans.